All right, so we're going to look at PixelLogic ZBrush and Blender together as a workflow. Whenever you're developing a workflow, you should always know both programs quite well. Um, let's say I teach this at a very fundamental level with no prerequisites required, though. Uh, so in other words, coming into the classroom, you have no understanding of Blender and you have no understanding of ZBrush. But we'll just kind of look at that marriage at a very fast-paced learning scale. But I would highly suggest if you're very interested in developing games, game assets, or anything related to that type of modeling, you should know the fundamentals to um, Blender quite well before jumping into ZBrush. That being said, you can make the underlying geometry within ZBrush, but there are some things that ZBrush is good at, and there are some things that another programmer is good at. After using Maya 3D Studio Max for 12, 15 odd years, I would say right now, after learning all that stuff, that my clear choice has been Blender for quite a while. Um, I would say a good year of using Blender, I, I'm hooked on Blender. Okay, I, I like the fact that I can transverse all three applications pretty well. That's probably a good thing for a student to be able to do too. So don't get married to a, any one program. They all do little things that are a little bit better between all three programs. But uh, for concepting out a character, whipping out some geometry very quickly, I like Blender. Now, there's this thing called a pipeline. There's being able to go from one application to the next very quickly. Uh, ZBrush has GoZ. Okay? So GoZ goes quite well with Maya. Again, I like Maya. I've used it for quite some time, but um, you'll see while I, why I'm using Blender if you're a Maya fan and if you're a 3D Studio Max fan. So we'll look at that. Right, I'm going to turn off Lightbox because it's annoying and go right into Blender. So knowing Maya, I would say the best thing you could do for the current build of Blender is go here and turn on Maya. Okay, now if you ever lose track of that, you can also go to File, User Preferences, and turn on the input Maya Maya. Okay, and Alt, Left, Middle, and Right on the mouse allows you to rotate, pan, zoom. Now WER on the keyboard allows you to move rotate and scale any one piece. Okay, those are just fundamental laws and navigation points. By knowing the Maya one, uh, you're understanding Blender, Maya, and a game engine called Unity. So they all use the same hotkeys. That's why I always teach students uh, the Maya variation because you're actually transversing three different applications just by knowing that. Alright, object mode allows you to move whole objects. Component mode or edit mode allows you to move components. Again, this is points, edges, faces. Okay, in object mode what we're going to do is W on the keyboard and we're going to make three cubes. Shift D Shift D. Okay, they each have their own fundamental components, and each one of them could I could hit Tab at any one time into any one of these, and I can get to their components. Now, back in ZBrush, if you wanted to use underlying geometry, uh, we don't have such things as being able to go into edges, faces, and vertices individually. You just pretty much got vertices, and that that's about it. So that's why I use a third party or a, another application with ZBrush half the time if you're making hard edge and soft edge geometry at the same time. That is game friendly. Uh, you can make a billion polygons look pretty smooth, but yeah, <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Actually, I'm going to show you what you're going to do with that, but let's look at this first. 
So we're going to take this one and leave it alone. This one, we're going to click on it and go into tab, hit control R. That allows you to set an edge loop in here and we're going to put an edge loop on every corner. Okay, the next box. Let's tab, then tab again. This time we're going to do this very same thing. We're going to hit Control R. Cool, very neat. Now we're going to do some quick UV work for these. <laughs> okay. When I say UV quick, usually I have students fall on the floor and laugh at me because they're saying, well, can't do UVs very thick, quick. What are you talking about? So right here, let's right click and hit split area. And let's go down to the bottom and just hit UV image editor. And let's go into the first box, go into the components, and go to edges. We're just going to highlight the edges as following. Now we want this box to just unwrap all the way to a flat surface. So, do do do, all the way down, just like this. Okay, and when I go over here and hit mark scene. I'll hit A, which highlights all faces, and then U to unwrap. There we go. Done. Let's do that for the next piece. Now, I could have uh, did that ahead of time, but it wouldn't have taught you anything as far as doing the UVs. So, in other words, I could have done the UVs on the first box and then duplicated it over. But, again, you know, not learning much out of that. Here is Shift and Alt, which allows you to take the entire edge loop going across. I can hit Mark Seam. So I'm just going to go around and hit Shift and Alt. In the same configuration I did before. Mark Seam. Okay, next. Now, what's the difference between this box and the other box? Well, you'll see shortly. Mark seam. Okay, now I'll just unwrap these. A, U, unwrap. And you'll see that this one has a little bit of an issue with the T. Okay, it turned it into a, a, a sort of organic type of UVs. Same here. So how do you avoid that? Well, the best thing to do, but it wouldn't have taught you how to do shift and alt, is take the first box and actually do the UVs at a lower level. Does this hurt anything? No. It's got the same equal amount of spacing. Uh, the fact that it's uh, cocked a little bit to this side doesn't hurt it at all here's how you move rotate and scale in here so if I just hit R to rotate left mouse to apply the transformation G is to grab and S is to scale each time hitting the left mouse button to apply that change Okay, again, over here, I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to straighten these out. You don't really have to do this, but um, I just want you to get used to the fact that you can move around the actual UVs itself. Good. So, in Blender, 
or in Blender we have this. In ZBrush we do not have the ability to go in and tweak UVs. That's another strong argument to why you use an actual different application to do the underlining geometry because we have the ability to manipulate and create UVs. Okay, so let's go in and take and join all these together. So go to object mode, hold shift, highlight all three. Let's go to object and join. I joined them because I want to teach you how to separate them. If that makes sense. So file, export, wavefront object. Now on my desktop I have something set up. It's an underscore blender to ZBrush. And I always use this because it floats to the top of whatever workflow I'm doing. And it's usually on the desktop transversing back and forth. So if I put the underscore there it allows it to float to the top and I don't look for my folders anymore. I'll just put test object and hit export. Okay, we've successfully exported a wavefront object. So in the next video we're going to kind of look at that and how to manipulate, separate, and why we put edge loops in here. But first, I forgot one thing. Let's hit control R and then wheel mouse up twice. Now if you don't get it right off the bat, you have to yeah, undo it once. There we go. Now if I just did this and hit control R and just lightly clicked, it also placed it uniformly between the two edges. So that's another thing that you could do. All right, let's go back to object mode and re-export this. All right, so there we go. Let's go to the next video where we play around with ZBrush with the new geometry that we built in Blender.